Hey, hey, we're back in the garage with Easy Jeezy. Today's video is going to be about how to tell if your camshaft has gone bad. A lot of controversy about oils not having zinc and other additives in them which causes flat tap at cams to go bad. If you suspect you have a problem, I'm going to show you how to verify that. So stay tuned. Okay, here's the critter right here. This, uh, Volkswagen engine came in my 69 Baja and it had been uh, road hard, put away wet, uh, fixed a lot of things on the uh, vehicle that definitely showed some abuse and of course a, a Baja is meant to be driven off road and you're bound to have abuse so that's uh, pretty much standard procedure. Uh, I've changed a few things. Uh, on it, but uh, I never could get it to run quite the way I thought it should. Um, it had power, it would drive down the road, but uh, just something about it. Uh, I usually have extremely good luck running my dual Delordos on it, and it came with uh, dual Cadrons on it, and I rebuilt those, put new uh, butterfly valve bodies underneath the carburetors, uh, thinking that it was loose throttle shafts and uh, I, I just no matter what I did I tried all of the tune-up tricks and uh, just couldn't get it to run quite right so I finally got fed up with it and I went over to Harbor Freight and I bought this uh, Pittsburgh clamping dial indicator these things are very affordable uh, and it's not of the best quality, but it really doesn't have to be. And we are not designing something or engineering something. What we're doing is we're going to make a comparison check of something. And for that function, uh, this is just fine. So uh, what I noticed, I did do a compression test on it with my uh, old reliable compression tester. And what I first thing I observed was that... Uh, and this was on a warm engine. Um, I had run it and I came back. I took the carburetors completely off and took the spark plugs all out and I ran it uh, for about an eight count on each hole. And I got 110, 110 on the right side, cylinders one and two. And on the three and four, there it is, the typical problem child. Uh, number three cylinder was 100 and four was 119 so I don't like the way this is scattered I want to find out more about it and it could be this reason why this thing has never run quite right uh, the the spark plugs looked okay um, when you're doing a compression check make sure that you hold the throttle butterfly wide open or uh, what I do because I have dual carbs uh, I just take the carbs completely off. There's no sense struggling trying to reach around stuff even in a Baja where the engine's hanging off the back and like I said I didn't build this engine but it is uh, a later model case because it doesn't have uh, provision for the fuel pump hole. Uh, that's what they did on the later fuel injected models they had to use an electric pump for more pressure. So uh, let me get you on the stand um, what you want to be critical of when you're setting these things up is that you have the the uh, shaft here just parallel with the valve stem but you don't want it contacting the rocker arm you want it right on the uh, retainer on the flat surface there and you want to get it all in position real nice so uh, let's uh, looks like the valves down I was playing with it um, I did this test oh like four times and I was off a hundred thousands it looked like I had a flat cam then I went inside and I tried to uh, edit a video <laughs> didn't like the way it was turning out came back out and did it again and I was getting different numbers and it's all about the position of this so don't become frustrated and don't don't jump to conclusions because I learned a real lesson there you know uh, be patient and take the time to set it up right and if the numbers look like they're off that's all the more to do it several times to make sure because uh, it's a lot of work you gotta pull that crack that case you gotta take this thing completely apart to change the cam and uh, you won't, don't want to do that if you don't have to so um, 
other things you look for are like oil leaks. Uh, if this doesn't have the typical signs of oil, so it could be something else like a bad valve. I could have an exhaust valve that's going away. That would be a common thing on number three cylinder, and the exhaust port looks a little wet here. So um, the intakes look clean and dry. So you could have a piston problem. You could have a broken ring or a problem with that. Um, well, let's take a look. First of all, we're going to do this test. Before we get started, I want to uh, take you to the Ingle Cam website, and they have a PDF file, and you find Volkswagen, and you find the W Series solid lifter camshaft for 1 to 1 and 1.25 ratio rockers. Now, I happen to know that. Uh, what's in that engine is a W100 because I changed the oil pump and I could see that stamped in the end of the camshaft and according to this it's telling you that if uh, you used a 1.25 rocker ratio rocker you'd have uh, 479 thousandths of lift on both the intake and exhaust if you used the uh, earlier 1 to 1 you'd have 120 and if you write at the cam, if you measure the the base circle against the top peak of the lobe, you should have 383. All you want to do is get tension. You want to get this stem, which is mid stroke. It comes with directions, but uh, I just thought I'd mention a few things here. So. It appears that we're in the down position, so you can see the the needle when it when it peaks. See, it peaks. That's going to be one of the measuring points. So you can this outer ring, and again, this doesn't have to be that. You're looking for a general comparison. It wouldn't matter if there was no numbers on there whatsoever. You just would be looking at that needle and you could put a pencil mark there. It, the, the, get the, get, in this case though, we're trying to measure and each full revolution is a hundred thousandths. So let's see what we get here. One, two, three, four, and we get it till it peaks right there. Okay, so we've got, uh, what do we got? Five, six, seven, four hundred and seven. Add another six, four hundred and thirteen. And what did it say the uh, advertised duration was on the chart? Uh, gosh, <laughs> I'll have to go look at the chart. Four hundred twenty, I think it was four hundred twenty on both is what with a one-to-one -one racial rocker now you can also see that this is a complete stock valve train they didn't put heavier springs on it this is all stock stuff they didn't and you can tell they don't if a, if you put stiffer springs in you're gonna have to go to a solid rocker shaft because wave washers on this thing will give out and uh, they didn't do any of that stuff but uh, a W100 Ingle cam is a pretty mild cam as far as a performance cam goes. So there's the intake. Now each intake valve, there's only four lobes on the camshaft. So you're doing both sides. This lobe also operates the intake on number one cylinder on the other side of the intake. Okay, we got you set up on number three cylinder exhaust valve and we're on the base circle of the cam, the base. You want to move it back and forth, make sure that your needle returns to the same spot when you go back to that base. And then you want to start counting. 100, 200, 300, 400. Okay, and it starts backing off. So get it to the high point there. 400 and 10, 11, 12, 13 plus 
uh, approximately six thousandths for your valve lash. Uh, so that would give you uh, uh, what 400, uh, 419 out of a possible 420 that the book specs out. So the cam is not wearing down in this thing. It's okay. And that the other reason why it's not running down is it's got all these stock valve springs. You When you run stock valve train and you put a performance cam in, what happens is the 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 valve will uh, not be set back down on the seat. It'll fly off the end of the cam lobe and then there's a a little bit of a space and when the valve pushes the valve closed, it's smacking it on the seat and that can beat up your seat. So you could have a loose seat, you could have broken rings, you could have a burned exhaust valve. There's a lot of reason to cause this lower compression on number three cylinder. So this is just one of the ways you can analyze the cam. You could do it in the car, but with this clamping setup, and it's just a good idea to take your engine out and undress it like this, and just to clean it. Uh, give it a good looking over, looking for oil leaks, checking whatever you want to check. So I can't resist it, and I didn't build this engine, so I'm kind of curious to, to what it is exactly. I want to know what the compression ratio is, and I want to know if it's uh, 1776. I don't think it's a 1600. It, even though it's running poorly, it runs better than a 1600 dual port. But it, as I've had it for the last couple of years, and I've had it in and out of the car, it just seems to me like it's not up to snuff. It's getting worse. So before something breaks, uh, we're going to get into it and we're going to pull this head off and I'll make a separate video on that. So really, really appreciate you uh, watching the vid. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.